Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I just got an exciting package in the mail and I can't wait to open it up and show you what I've got. For context, I have been busy prepping for a few months now to film more bird and wildlife content on this YouTube channel. If you watched my 2024 what's in my bag video, link above, you might have noticed one notable admission from my kit. As I was going through my video gear, I did not cover any lens filters, which if you're familiar at all with video, you're gonna know is a vital part of any YouTuber's kit. I might have solved that problem though, and that's where this little package comes in. The company Case, which specializes in lens filters, just so happened to reach out and they asked if I'd like to try their new Revolution KW magnetic filters. And as it turns out, I happen to already be a pretty big fan of these magnetic case filters. I have a few from their Wolverine lineup that I took with me to Maine a little while back and they were awesome. So I was more than happy to try these out and give you my honest thoughts. So we're gonna take them out to the field today and I'll show you exactly how to use filters like these to improve your wildlife footage. But first things first, let's go inside and see what's in the box. On the cover of the box, I couldn't help but notice that it features a photo by Nigel Danson, a popular landscape photographer and a YouTuber. I'm nerding out, but I have to say, I love the case that this comes with. It has a Velcro strap and a clip for attaching to things, and inside are individual slots for your filters. The kit comes with a magnetic lens cap, which I do appreciate having had to buy them separately before. Next up we've got the ND64, which provides six stops of light reduction and lets in 1 64th of the light that your camera would without a filter. It's got a nice gold ring on it. After that we've got the ND8, which provides three stops of light reduction and only lets in 1 8th of the light that you'd get without a filter. It's got a lovely blue ring. Finally, the circular polarizer with a nice silver ring. I actually like the color coding on these filters, by the way. It's super helpful if you're just needing to quickly grab the right filter out of your pouch. In the accessories box, we've got a few things like an inlaid ring and a magnetic ring that screws onto the front of your lens so that you can attach the filters to that. And we've got a few other things like this branded microfiber cloth, but my favorite are the color coded stickers for labeling the tabs in the pouch. To get everything set up, I'm going to go ahead and screw in the magnetic ring to the front of my 500PF. From there, all the filters will quickly stick to the front of the lens. Magnetic filter systems are especially useful because there are going to be times where I'm going to be taking a video and I might quickly need to pivot to a photo, and I just wouldn't have time with a non-magnetic filter to unscrew the filter and still get my photo. All right, so I think I've got everything set up and ready to go, but before I head out, I'm gonna put these stickers in the pouch on the tabs for each of my individual filters. So I've also got these two filters from the Case Wolverine lineup that I bought with my own money a few years ago for my 14 to 30, and I'd like to just take them out of these cases and add them to this pouch too. All right, so now that we're all set up, let's grab the Z9 and we're gonna test these out and demonstrate how they can improve your wildlife footage. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you while I'm here is the circular polarizing filter. And if you don't know what one is, let me give you a quick rundown. So as you can see, I'm standing here by the lake and the sun is shining down onto the water. But as that light is hitting the surface, it's scattering in specific directions. And that's what's called polarization. And that polarized light is what's responsible for glare and for haze and for reflections in glass. And what a circular polarizing filter does is it filters out that directional light while still allowing the rest of the light in. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stick the case circular polarizing filter on my 500 PF and test it out here on the water because as you can see, there is a lot of glare out here. So let's get to it. As you can see here, there's a lot of polarized light reflecting from the surface of the water. It creates distracting blue reflections from the bright sunny sky. Let's compare this footage to the footage with the polarizer. 
As you can see, the polarizer has not only reduced that glare from the surface of the water, but it's increased the color saturation and the contrast of the footage as well. Here's the footage side by side so that you can see the clear difference. In this second example, light is bouncing off the wet grass, washing out the colors and creating bright highlights. With the circular polarizing filter, you can see that the troublesome light is filtered, creating more colorful and pleasing looking footage. You can really see the difference side by side. Okay, so the next thing I wanna test are the two neutral density filters that come with this kit. And I'm especially grateful for these because I think they're really gonna come in handy for filming wildlife. And here's why. There's this general rule of thumb when filming video that you want your video shutter speed to be double that of your frame rate to get a natural looking image. So for example, I film my YouTube videos in 30 frames per second. So to get a natural looking image with a little bit of motion blur, the video shutter speed would have to be 1 60th of a second. Now, on a bright day like this, that might not actually be possible. If I were to set my shutter to 1 60th of a second, it's gonna way overexpose the video. So take a look here. I've set my shutter to 1 60th of a second at 30 frames per second. You can see how bright the result is, and this is with cloud cover. To combat this, I'm gonna use the ND8 filter. This will block three full stops of light, allowing me to get a proper exposure. My camera settings are exactly the same for this shot, but you can see clearly that the ND8 has allowed me to get a proper exposure while at the same time decreasing my shutter speed to the correct setting of 1 60th of a second. Here's another side by side. Indie filters aren't just good for video either. Photographers love them too because they can give your image an artistic effect. And this park actually has a waterfall, which is perfect because it's gonna allow me to demonstrate the classic example. I'm gonna go ahead and blur the water coming down the waterfall by sticking on the ND64, and you'll see that it'll allow me to really slow down my shutter speed and really blur that water as it's coming down over the ledge. So without a filter, the water is basically frozen in place. With the ND64 though, we get six stops of light filtered, meaning we can really slow down our shutter speed for some blur. Here's another example using the fountain on the lake. Before, the water is frozen in the air, and after, you see that the increased shutter speed allows for a nice flowing image with some movement in it. Okay, so just to wrap up with a few final thoughts about this filter system. I had a great time out at the lake testing these out, and I'm happy to say that I like them and I will be using them to capture wildlife footage for this year's videos. The ability to mount magnetically paired with the nice case and the color coding on the filters all allow me to quickly add and remove filters as the conditions change, which is really important when you're dealing with birds and wildlife. On top of all of that, I noticed no discernible color cast coming from the filters, which makes color grading and editing the footage that much easier. I also couldn't see any drop in sharpness, and the improvements in saturation and contrast when using the filters gave my footage a much improved look. The only real downside I could see here is that the kit is a bit pricey if you're on a budget. You're looking at $200 to $400 depending on the kit you buy. For some, that might be a turnoff. That said, if you're looking to invest in a great set of filters that are high quality and easy to use, these are a great option and would make a wonderful addition to your kit. If you want to check out the filters yourself, I'll put a link to them in the description below. Thank you, Case, for sending them to me to review, and I think I'm going to wrap it up for this week. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.